Uh, we are aware, I am aware today that just within the last half hour, the federal government has issued regulations um, around lending practices. I think when you look at them, you'll see that many of them echo the concerns that we raised and also address the kinds of issues that we are concerned about in terms of practices at the origination of a loan, in terms of broker incentives uh, and other issues. As these uh, go through a 90-day period for comment and as they are implemented and indeed as we look at federal legislation, again, we are committed to make sure that those who do business in Massachusetts and who do it legally and who do it well are not disadvantaged uh, by what are either overlapping or duplicative regulations. Uh, I think we owe that not only to the consumers in Massachusetts, but to our banks and our brokers and our lending companies who play by the rules, and we intend to do that. Um, we uh, have indicated one other change through the guidance uh, in terms of no documentation loans that answered concerns raised as we talked to the industry. There are cases where the assets, for instance, of an individual uh, would indicate that they're an appropriate um, recipient of a loan with no documentation of income, but by and large, what these regulations address are the following. First, that the mortgage lenders and brokers have to reasonably assess the borrower's ability to repay the loan, not only at the outset, but at the reset. Uh, we found that, and you can, uh, again, within our hearings and our comment period, we found example after example of loans that on their face clearly should not have been made. Individuals whose monthly income was far below not only what the original uh, amount due on the mortgage per month was going to be, but certainly would not have been uh, able to be paid and was a loan that was destined to fail when that reset. Uh, we know, uh, again, that in Massachusetts, at least, the highest number of those loans about to reset uh, were made in 2006. So uh, as we've looked at both regulations to prevent abuse in the future and as we've worked with other agencies in Massachusetts to try uh, and see if there are ways that we can address this foreclosure and the reset issue, uh, it is of still great concern uh, to everybody involved in this market. We understand that. The second uh, regulation uh, prohibits a conflict of interest. In other words, where a broker's compensation increases if the homeowner obtains a loan with a higher interest rate and less favorable terms. In other words, the broker's financial incentive is clearly and obviously in direct conflict with what the borrower's best interest is. That, I believe, is addressed by the regs that were, intro uh, were introduced this morning by the federal government. It is a concern uh, and it is a situation that is ripe for abuse when brokers' incentives, uh, particularly when they are undisclosed, provide for a conflict of interest for the consumer. Our third regulation prohibits lenders from price gouging or discriminating against borrowers with similar credit criteria and other relevant qualifications. Our guidance addresses uh, this issue, uh, does not say you cannot compete with the bank or the broker down the street. It just says that you have to be fair in dealing with customers who come before you uh, in a way that makes sense. Uh, again, these are designed to address those egregious abuses, um, not to provide some sort of um, uh, strict mantra that should there be uh, any kind of variance on uh, some, uh, we, our office is going to say, you violated Chapter 93A. It's not the purpose, it's not the intent, it's not what we're going to do. The fourth um, uh, regulation restricts the use of loans made without income documentation, um, which will stop abusive products that we have seen time and again with no documentation as to owner's income or appraisal um, values. Again, there is an exception made if there is other documentation of assets that would warrant the loan. Again, um, these are regulations that merely identify, we believe, for the banking, the mortgage lending industry, uh, the abuses that are already illegal under Massachusetts law. Uh, we have declared after January 2nd they are uh, determined by these regulations clearly to be illegal. Uh, we've noted and we've made this change that for applications that are in the pipeline before January 2nd, they will not apply. We want to be fair to those uh, consumers and those lenders who have uh, uh, mortgages uh, in process and so they do not apply until January 2nd. Um, I think that uh, we uh, have, have agreed to, in response to a request from um, Senator to say, um, make sure that every broker, uh, every licensed broker and lender in Massachusetts gets a copy of the guidance 
Uh, we uh, are in the process of getting those out today because I know that despite what we have said and despite our hearings since June, uh, there may be those individuals who haven't followed it closely. Um, and we have worked closely with the Division of Banks in terms of getting information out. Uh, and we have this information posted on our website. I will say that those people uh, who do mortgage lending in Massachusetts have some obligation in light of what has to be clear uh, that we have been entertaining regulations and that we are promulgating them. We have delayed them for a period of time. Um, we're not uh, trying to be unreasonable about this, but we think the time has come to implement them. And again, uh, I've made a commitment as they are implemented uh, to review any unintended consequences that make them overly burdensome for those who are subject to them. Um, with that, I'd be happy to take uh, questions. 